Idaho is on the rise. How local police are teaming up with retailers to crack down on the nationwide problem. Plus, another leader stepping down after the shooting in Uvalde, Texas earlier this year, who's announcing their retirement. Plus, a local business headed to Florida helping clean up following Hurricane Ian. What they hope to help with as neighbors there return to what's left of their homes. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. It is Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And let's send it over to Marco Squadarama for a first look at our weather forecast. Starting out by taking a look at your current temperature this morning for your Tuesday, 51 degrees east winds there at five miles an hour. A little chilly this morning. A look at our current temperatures for uh, as you head out the door this morning, 55 Nampa, Ontario 61, 46 Mountain Home, and then 40 degrees out in the McCall area. Temperatures once again staying above normal, but slightly cooler than yesterday. Here's our normal high, yesterday's high. Today we'll be seeing temperatures about five degrees cooler than that. 74 Boise, 72 Idaho City, and 75 degrees out in Caldwell. Now, that's all courtesy of a cold front moving through the area, cooling us down, continuing to monitor that smoke surface forecast, hazy conditions here in the valley as well as the mountain regions for today and tomorrow. A look at what to expect for the next several days, hazy conditions, windy conditions for today as that cold front moves through and highs in the 70s throughout the week. A little cooler today, but back into those mid 70s by tomorrow and dry conditions through the weekend. Thank you, Marcos. It sounds picture perfect. It is 501 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. It is looking good out there. Very quiet as we kick off your Tuesday. Hope you all are having a good morning out there. Uh, not much to report. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. A 77 year old man from Meridian is missing this morning. His name's Robert Trotter. He was last seen leaving Central Valley Baptist Church around 11 AM Sunday morning. Now he was driving a silver 2018 Jeep Renegade by four that afternoon back on Sunday. Cell phone data placed him between Horseshoe Bend and Banks. Now Trotter is described as five foot eight, a man with gray hair. Now if you've seen him or have any information that could help find him, please give a call to 911. Well, shoplifting, it's on the rise here in Idaho, and now police are partnering with several businesses, not only to stop shoplifters, but also to prevent other stores from being targets. CBS 2's Michaela Elich is, tells us how they hope to combat that growing problem. Every year, businesses across the U.S. lose billions of dollars to shoplifters. Here in Idaho, it's no different. It's truly following so much more of the national narrative that we see, not only in the West, but the whole entire country. Retailers are seeing more activity. Last year, BPD reported 472 shoplifting cases. This year, that number is expected to go even higher. Looking at year to year, approximately 50 more in 2022 so far than in 2021. So by the end of 2022, we should be well ahead of 21. The main culprits aren't locals, but traveling thieves. Boise, Idaho is also targeted by groups that travel nationally, that travel internationally as well. In March, Boise police arrested two women who were allegedly members of a band of traveling thieves. They're accused of shoplifting over $37,000 in merchandise. That's why BPD entered a partnership. It's made up of 26 law enforcement agencies and 34 retailers. We have um, regular meetings with the retailers at the Boise Police Department and other police departments where we talk about it. Because if the person's hitting Walmart, they're probably hitting Target. They're probably hitting Home Depot. And the partnership allows for better communication. If a retailer X has a person steal from them, they're able to share that information, get it to us as law enforcement, get it to the other retailers. And so while they were not able to, able to catch them at that time, you know, when they walk into that next door, because they are going to walk into that next door, they're able to use that information. Truly, it's, it's impacting all of us. And if we're able to work with our retailers, work with our law enforcement agencies, we're able to apprehend these folks. Yeah, right now, that partnership, not only in Idaho, but in the surrounding states of Oregon, Washington, Utah, and even California. 
Well, switching gears following months of community outrage over the handling of the Uvalde school shooting, the district superintendent announcing he plans to retire at the end of the academic year. Now, recently, Hal Harrell and other officials faced heavy scrutiny for procedures that were in place during at Robb Elementary School leading up to the shooting that left 19 students and two teachers dead. I personally am asking that you accept the retirement offered by Dr. Harrell and that you make it not at the end of the school year, but as soon as possible. The Uvalde School Board voted unanimously Monday night to begin the search for Harold's successor. Now, last week, the entire police department that serves the school district was suspended. Now, a July report from Texas lawmakers found systemic failures and egregious poor decision making in response to that shooting, during which responders waited more than an hour before confronting the gunman in a classroom. Our place is, is over there. It was probably moved about 20 feet, hit the other trailer next to us. We can't get in the front door, but we were able to get in through the back door, and the water was all the way up to the ceiling. Cleanup continues in Florida after Hurricane Ian hit the state two weeks ago. Many neighbors in Fort Myers Beach are returning home for the first time since evacuating so they could see the damage. Some were not able to get into their homes, and some people had to use ladders to climb over their roofs just to get inside. And a local business here in Idaho is helping homeowners in Florida recover after the devastating impact of Hurricane Ian. Disaster Response of Idaho sent a team of 14 to Florida. The group arrived this weekend, and so far they've been able to help two people get back into their homes. They're hoping to help many more. Definitely taking a lot of people and a lot of work, but it's great to be able to actually hear people coming up and saying, hey, you know what, I really appreciate you guys being here and, uh, you know, I'm glad that we can go and into our house. Right now, they're working to make damaged homes secure. They're putting up plywood where doors and windows were, clearing out people's belongings, and then cutting out drywall that was destroyed by water. They plan to stay for several months, helping in the recovery efforts at least until Christmas and possibly longer. And the death toll from Julia has risen to 19. According to the Associated Press, the victims were reported in El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. Julia hit the coast of Nicaragua early Sunday as a Category 1 hurricane, bringing strong winds and heavy rain. The National Hurricane Center says the storm is now moving inland over Guatemala. Julia is expected to continue getting weaker, but still brings a threat of flash floods and mudslides across Central America and Southern Mexico. Well, turning to fire season, a new fire burning north of Camas in Clark County, Washington. It's quickly growing. Now crews working to get that blaze under control. Now it's the Nakia Creek fire. It's sitting at over 250 acres this morning, growing quickly from the 70 acres first reported earlier this week. Now fire officials issuing level one and two evacuation notices on 110 homes. That's as the blaze grows closer, something neighbors say is unusual. Come October, we're used to rain right now, and you know as we start to get hunting season, and you know everyone kind of starting to transition recreationally. Uh, you know it's definitely alarming that it's still this dry. With hot and dry conditions expected to continue another week, neighbors say they do plan to stay on high alert. Now the Washington Department of Natural Resources says the cause of this fire is still under investigation. In the meantime, the Salmon Chalice National Forest, they're removing the, er, removing the Moose Fire Emergency Area. They're also lifting all road and trail closures. That's on Thursday, October 14th. Now as things reopened, forest officials warning visitors to remain vigilant. Now after a fire, the root system of burned or dead trees, they can be weak or damaged. That does increase the potential for trees to fall without warning, so keep that in mind. Also, keep an eye out for ash pits, holes in the ground filled with ash that often contain hot embers underneath. You can find more information as well as tips if you are recreating. Just head to our website, idahonews.com. Yes, speaking of recreating, the leaves changing, guys, it is gorgeous. Um, I know many people heading out to Katherine Albertsons to see some of those leaves changing. Do you guys have any nice areas you've been seeing or maybe recreating in over the past couple of, well, I guess it's been about a week we've been seeing these changes. I think I, for me, oh, okay. uh, for me, it, it's the green belt, Sarah, yeah. Ashley. Yeah, I, the, the, the trees are beautiful this time of year. 
yeah, you want to get out and go for a nice walk, especially with these temperatures. Something, yeah, Ashley, not too excited about. We're looking towards winter. <laughs> We're getting closer. <laughs> getting closer, slowly <laughs> but surely. Hopefully, a forecast for you coming up. But for now, it's for our warm weathered folks. Marcos, take it away. Yeah, well, the good news for Ashley is we will be a little cooler for today. I know she's looking forward to those cooler conditions, but uh, look outside right now. Uh, bogus Donnelly Boise here. Uh, cooler conditions for today. We are seeing a cold front move through the region. Uh, bringing us those cooler conditions for today, about five degrees cooler than yesterday. But uh, let's start out by taking a look at our current temperatures. 55 in Nampa, 48 Caldwell this morning as you head out the door, 51 here in Boise, 46 down in Mountain Home, and then there's Baker City at 55 degrees this morning. That coffee forecast for today, our high of 73 today, that sunshine sticking around. As I did mention that those hazy conditions will also continue to stick around for for today and tomorrow uh, as those fires burn in the region. But out the door forecast, a little cooler this morning in the 50s, getting into the upper 50s by 11, 60s by 1, and then 70s by about 3 p.m. this afternoon. Of course, sunny conditions as well. And then that bus stop forecast, uh, 50s this morning as well. Clear skies out there. And then as the kids head home this afternoon, 72, nice and sunny. And uh, looking at that future cast, as I said, cold front moving through, bringing those cooler temperatures, but overall staying dry, getting back up into those warmer conditions as that high pressure rebuilds beginning tomorrow. So we're looking mid 70s, uh, possibly upper 70s throughout the rest of the week and staying nice and dry, nice degrees, uh, nice highs in the 70s. Yeah, it is a perfect fall week ahead. Thank you, Marcos. It's 511 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, looking good out there. We are not seeing any reports of things slowing you down like incidents nor accidents. Of course, when you do eventually get in the car, you want to tune it to News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the economy is at the top of many voters' minds. Midterms quickly approaching as inflation continues to create concerns. And later, a railroad union rejecting employer contracts, why it may lead to another possible strike and some major economic setbacks. Well, hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 20% of people will attend one of these between now and the end of the year. That answer, a baby shower. All right, now for today's question. Nearly 10% of people say they have a vivid memory of doing this as a child. All right, folks, let's get creative. What do you think it is? Here's a look at your local forecast in Marsing today. Hazy conditions with a high of 73 tonight, lows in the 40s and tomorrow those hazy conditions sticking around with a high of 75. Thank you, Marcos. Well, the third largest U.S. railroad union rejecting a deal with their employers. Now that once again does raise the possibility of a strike that could hobble the transportation and goods that overall will affect the economy. Now, before any walkout, both sides are first expected to return to the bargaining table. Now, while the union did agree to keep working for now, the group that represents the railroads in negotiations said it was disappointed the union rejected the agreement. Early voting begins this week in several states for the November midterms. New polling shows economy remains a top issue for most voters. For many business owners, rising costs are creating concerns for their businesses and the families of their employees. I employ a staff of over 30 people and I worry about their families and I worry about how I'm going to provide them a paycheck to put food on their family's table. While many voters say they believe Republicans are better suited to handle the economy, a CBS News poll taken in late September found that among voters who think the economy is very important, they believe Republican candidates are talking about immigration and President Biden more than their economic policies. Well, the Idaho Food Bank is giving out food in Nampa today. Now, free food will be distributed at the Ford Idaho Center parking lot that starts at 11 a.m. sharp, expected to last through 3 o'clock, or it could end sooner if that food does run out. 
Well, guys, it's looking like a beautiful fall-like week. Uh, no, I guess, excitement as far as any precipitation moving our way. But that is something you need to keep in mind if you are going to be recreating. Marcos. That's right. Uh, staying dry for the most part of this week. We are uh, currently seeing a cold front move through the area, bringing us cooler conditions for today, about five degrees cooler than yesterday's high. But uh, looking at our current temperature this morning, 51 degrees, uh, east winds at five miles an hour, and our temperatures outside the door this morning as you head out the door, 46 out in the mountain home area, 55 Twin Falls, 48 in Caldwell, and then 61 degrees out in the Ontario area this morning. Our high highs for today, uh, slightly cooler than yesterday, as I mentioned, 74 Boise, uh, 73 Mountain Home, and then 75 degrees in the Nampa Caldwell area. Now, that's, of course, courtesy of that cold front moving through. Uh, Going to see dry conditions, though, so not bringing any moisture or precipitation to the area. So uh, lightly just those cooler temperatures for today and then those uh, high pressure rebuilding by tomorrow. Once again, forecast for tomorrow, uh, getting uh, to the mid 70s, upper 70s, beginning tomorrow as that high pressure builds. So a look at what to expect. Hazy sunshine for today, windy conditions as that front moves through, highs in the 70s and that dry uh, condition through the weekend. Extended forecast. Cooling down for today, mid 70s beginning tomorrow and then staying the, that hazy sunny conditions throughout the week, lows in the 40s and then that mountain forecast, a cool down into the mid 60s today, hazy 70 tomorrow and then staying in those low 70s throughout the week, plenty of sunshine, no moisture, staying dry and then lows in the 30s. Ooh, a little chilly out there for our friends in the mountains. Thank you, Marcos. It is 518 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there. Uh, no reports of anything slowing you down, no matter if you're heading eastbound or westbound or those secondary roads. When you do get in the car, just make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And before we go, here's Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello everybody, it's Corporal Wills coming at you with another Traffic Tip Tuesday on this beautiful sunny fall day. Now speaking of the sun, it's nice and bright and beautiful out here right now today, but we're finding that the sun's coming up a little bit later in the morning and going down a little bit earlier in the evening. So we're really needing to use headlights and taillights and make sure they're working properly before we hit the road between sunset and sunrise. So what does the Idaho law say specifically about headlights and taillights? Well, in the state of Idaho, you are required to have your headlights and taillights on and functioning between sunset and sunrise or any other time that it's too dark out to see your vehicle from more than 500 feet. So if we think about those really overcast and rainy days and our vehicles aren't quite seen on the road as easily, we probably need our headlights and taillights on those days as well. But speaking specifically from sunset to sunrise, since the sun is going down a little earlier and coming up a little bit later, we want to talk a little bit more about what do headlights and taillights mean that we have to make sure they're working. So in the state of Idaho, you have to have two functioning headlights, one on the right and one on the left. They can't both be on one side and one functioning tail light in order to be within the Idaho law. Now, two tail lights is even going to be more safe because that means that you're more easily seen. The only exception to two headlights and one tail light would be on a motorcycle, which is what I ride and many folks do. You're only required to have the one headlight and one tail light operating on a motorcycle. So just remember, we want you to be seen so that people don't run into you and that you can see the road and drive to where you're going safely is all of our goal. So that's this week's Traffic Tip Tuesday. Remember, buckle up, buckaroo. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, we have new findings when it comes to cancer screenings and colonoscopies, why it may not be as effective as we once thought. And later, many who own self-driving cars putting too much trust in technology by one new study reminding drivers about the tech's limitations. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 
It's 523. Welcome back. There are new questions today about the effectiveness of a common test to detect cancer. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus, she shares what a new study shows about colonoscopies. Hey everybody, this study, one of the first to head to head compare those who got a screening colonoscopy and those who did not. Researchers found those who did get the test only had an 18% lower risk of getting colorectal cancer and no significant reduction in death compared to those who did not. It was an unexpected find of a test routinely recommended to find colon cancer at an early stage. Depending on what you find during a colonoscopy, it can be anywhere from uh, yearly, every three years, five years, up to every 10 years if you have a completely clean colonoscopy. Jeff James told us, however, his first screening colonoscopy likely saved his life. Doctors did discover he had early stage colon cancer. Surgery to remove it now has him cancer free and appreciating, he says, the gift of good health. I guess a, a brush, whether close or not so close with your mortality, will, will do that. But Dr. David Draper and the team here at Ohio's TriHealth Cancer Institute told me this is a study where it's important to go beyond the headline. Turns out less than half of the people invited to get a colonoscopy chose to do so. When you look at those who did get the screening test, in that population a colonoscopy was shown to cut the risk of cancer by more than 30 percent and the risk of dying of that cancer by half. Cancer team also says the results of this study are not consistent with previous investigations of other colon cancer screenings and longer follow-up is needed. They also remind us that colon cancer is now showing up in people who are younger more than in previous years. We don't completely know why. There are some theories that it may have to do with uh, current diet, exercise, uh, maybe the, the gut biome, the different microbacteria that we have in our GI tract. Current guidelines recommend colon cancer screening with colonoscopy should begin by age 45. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. And a new study in the Annals of Internal Medicine did find some eligible patients they were less likely to be screened for lung cancer. Now that includes men, former smokers, and younger people who met that criteria. Data collected between 2015 and 2019 showed screened persons tend to be older, female, and more likely to currently smoke. Now, an accompanying letter recommends doctors take complete smoking histories from their patients and says messaging needs to reach people eligible for screenings from historically underserved populations. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a local group bringing aid to those impacted by Hurricane Ian, how they're helping out this morning. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 News or CBS 2. Of course, we have our three hour block of FBI for you. Then you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. Of course, we'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, shoplifting in Idaho on the rise. How local police are teaming up with retailers to crack down on the nationwide problem. Plus, another leader stepping down after the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas earlier this year, who's announcing their retirement. Plus, crews set to lift fire closures in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. What they want visitors to still be on the lookout for as they clean up Idaho's largest wildfire. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Slightly cooler temperatures headed our way for today, but first let's start out by taking a look at our current temperature this morning as you head out the door. 51 degrees, east winds there at 5 miles an hour. A look at temperatures across the region this morning. Nampa at 55 degrees, 61 Ontario, 46 Mountain Home, and McCall at 40 degrees this morning for your Tuesday. Going to stay uh, once again above normal, 68 our normal, yesterday's high 77 degrees, today 
they will be staying about five degrees warmer than that. 74 Boise, 73 Mountain Home and Baker City, 71 degrees. Smoke surface forecast will continue to see those hazy conditions in the valley and the mountain regions for today and tomorrow as those fires burn in our region. But a quick look at what to expect. Hazy, hazy sunshine for today. Windy conditions as that cold front moves through and highs in the 70s, but it's going to be a dry and sunny through the weekend. Thank you, Marcos. A perfect fall week is ahead. It is 531 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. It is looking good out there this morning. Uh, we have no reports of anything set to slow you down on our roads. You can see smooth sailing out there this morning. Yeah, everything looking clear. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. A 77 year old man from Meridian is missing. Robert Trotter was last seen leaving Central Valley Baptist Church around 11 AM on Sunday morning. He's driving a silver 2018 Jeep Renegade and by four that afternoon, cell phone data placed him between Horseshoe Bend and Banks. Trotter is described as 5'8 with gray hair. If you've seen him or have any information that could help find him, please call 911. Shoplifting is on the rise in Idaho. That's according to Idaho State Police data. Every year, businesses across the U.S. lose billions of dollars to shoplifters. Here in Idaho, it's no different. The main culprits are not locals, but traveling thieves. Now local police are partnering with several businesses to not only stop shoplifters, but also prevent other stores from being targeted. If a retailer X has a person steal from them, they're able to share that information, get it to us as law enforcement, get it to the other retailers. And so while they were not able, able to catch them at that time, you know, when they walk into that next door, because they are going to walk into that next door, they're able to use that information. Right now, the partnership is not only in Idaho, but also the surrounding states of Oregon, Washington, Utah, and even California. Well, following months of community outrage over the handling of the Uvalde school shooting, the district superintendent announcing he plans to retire by the end of the academic year. Now, recently, Hal Harrell and other officials faced heavy scrutiny for the procedures in place at Robb Elementary School that led up to the shooting of 19 students and two teachers. I personally am asking that you accept the retirement offered by Dr. Harold and that you make it not at the end of the school year, but as soon as possible. The Uvalde School Board voted unanimously Monday evening to begin that search for Harold's successor. And last week, the entire police department that serves the school district, they were suspended. Now, a July report from Texas lawmakers found systemic failures and egregiously or decision making in the response to the shooting, during which responders waited more than an hour before confronting the gunman in a classroom. Our place is, is over there. It was probably moved about 20 feet, hit the other trailer next to us. We can't get in the front door, but we were able to get in through the back door, and the water was all the way up to the ceiling. Cleanup continues in Florida after Hurricane Ian hit the state two weeks ago. Many neighbors in Fort Myers Beach are returning home for the first time since they had to evacuate so they could see the damage. Some were not able to get into their homes and some people even had to use ladders to climb over their roofs just to get inside. A local business is helping homeowners in Florida recovering following the impact of Hurricane Ian. Now that group arrived over the weekend and so far they tell us they've been able to help two people get back into their homes. They are hoping to help many more. CBS 2's Angela Curdle shares how they're lending a hand. When you look at the news, you can feel heartbreak for those people and everything. But being here and actually being involved with the cleanup, it is beyond anything I've ever fathomed. Helping people recover from disasters is what McCall native Milton Espy does for a living. But he's never seen anything like the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. It is absolutely mind-boggling. It just breaks your heart, but you're glad to be helpful. The company he works for, Disaster Response of Idaho, sent a team of 14 to Florida. They're now working in Bonita Springs. This whole area in here, I mean, was just littered with 
with debris everywhere. So this is, you know, we've cleaned it up and we've put it in piles around here, but we're waiting on our dumpsters. It's been really hard to get dumpsters. And so we have dumpsters coming tomorrow and then we'll, then we'll be able to, to get it clean cleaned up and looking a lot better. They've added dozens of locals to their crew. Right now, they're working to make damaged homes secure. They're putting up plywood where doors and windows once were, clearing out people's belongings, and then cutting out drywall destroyed by water. The lower level of all these homes has basically just been destroyed from, from the surge coming through. Here you can see a flood line about six and a half feet high. I'm 5'10", so... That's a good six inches taller than me. The Idaho crew isn't licensed to do major repair work in Florida, so they're getting the homes ready for the next contractors to come in. Everything down to bare bones to where we can actually start getting some uh, machinery and, and equipment in there to, to suck out the moisture, clean the air, to where we can start getting rebuilt to where they can get these people back into their homes. They did get a couple back into their home. They're going from one house to the next, doing what they can for as many people as they can. This is not a short project. They're not just going to be in Florida for a few weeks. They plan to stay for several months. It's definitely taking a lot of people and a lot of work, but it's great to be able to actually hear people coming up and saying, hey, you know what, I really appreciate you guys being here. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that we can go and into our house. The company. Now, Bo Value says he expects his team could be in Florida helping with the recovery effort through at least Christmas and even possibly longer. And the death toll from Julia has risen to 19. According to the Associated Press, the victims were reported in El Salvador, Honduras and Guatemala. Julia hit the coast of Nicaragua early Sunday morning as a Category 1 hurricane, bringing strong winds and heavy rain. The National Hurricane Center says the storm is now moving inland over Guatemala. Julia is expected to continue getting weaker, but it still brings the threat of flash floods and mudslides across both Central America and Southern Mexico. Well, the San Michales National Forest, they'll be removing the Moose Fire Emergency Area and lifting all road and trail closures. That's on Thursday, October 14th. But as things reopen, forest officials, they want to warn visitors to remain vigilant. Now, after a fire, a reminder that the root system is burned or dead and those trees can be weakened or damaged, that does increase the potential for trees to fall without warning. They also want you to keep an eye out for ash pits. Now, those are holes in the ground filled with ash. They often contain hot embers underneath. Yeah, some good tips for you. And you can find more information about that on our website. Just head to IdahoNews.com. All right, Marcos Ashley, of course, Halloween is on the forefront. I know many people getting out, not only getting their pumpkins, but getting them carved. And what I want to know is, what is your go-to for carving pumpkins? Do you do a face? Do you do an animal? What, what are you, what's your favorite thing to do? You know, I'm kind of artistically challenged when it comes to carving pumpkins, so I just go for the easiest the thing easy. possible, which would be a face. <laughs> I understand that. I'm not, I'm not going to discount that. We need to have a competition here at CBS to do some pumpkin carving. It's, I'm just itching to get it done. <laughs> I, I, I'm with Ashley. I'm not, I'm, yeah. I, usually just a little trace I uh, cut out and call it good. You know? Yeah, exactly. Well, it keeps it easy, I guess. So you can, you know, the scooping is, is half the fun, I suppose, if you're, if you're into that. And then All roasting right. the pumpkin seeds. I don't know if you yeah. guys do that, but so good. Okay. I actually haven't done that, but I want to try it this year. So I might need some tips, Ashley. And speaking of tips, I know this week looking great, Marcos. Tell us what we can expect. Yeah, slightly cooler conditions uh, for today. Uh, it's all courtesy of a cold front moving through. I'll have more of that later, but a look outside right now, Boise, uh, Bogus Basin, Donnelly, uh, nice, uh, beautiful areas this morning, but we are going to be about five degrees cooler than our high yesterday. A look at our current temperatures, though, this morning, upper 40s in the Caldwell and Nampa area here in Boise, 51 degrees, 48 down in the Mountain Home area, and then Baker City at 55 this morning. That coffee forecast for today, our high 73 degrees, uh, nice and sunny. We are cooler. Yesterday's high was 77 degrees, but of course that cold front moving through the area, bringing us these cooler, uh, potent, uh, cooler conditions with the potential of uh, gusty winds later on throughout the day as well. So out the door forecast, 50s this morning, 60s this afternoon, and then getting into the 70s by about 3 p.m. But of course, sunny conditions, as I did mention that. And then that bus stop forecast for the uh, kids headed out to school, 50 degrees, 
And then when you're picking the kids up from the bus stop, 72 degrees, nice and sunny conditions. Staying fairly dry throughout the rest of the week. That cold front moving through, bringing those cooler conditions, but we have a nice cool, dry week ahead. Temperatures will warm back up into the mid 70s and upper 70s as that uh, high pressure continues to build later on this week. Thank you, Marcos. 541 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything is looking good. Hey, it's a good morning. No reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. All right, folks, it's time for our question of the day. That question, nearly 10% of people say they have a vivid memory of doing this as a child. All right, we may not have the graphic up. Let me, oh, nope, we do. All right, what are we thinking? Ashley Marcos, only 10%. That's a very small amount. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah, I was going to say learning how to ride a bike, but I think oh. most of us probably remember that. See, I remember I remember yeah. falling off a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I remember falling off <laughs> a lot. That moment of taking the training wheels off. I think oh yeah, that was such a milestone as yeah. a kid. I just remember being terrified. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Ashley, what, what is yours? Man, I this one has me still thinking. I mean, maybe yeah. reading? That's Oh, yeah. See, I, and immediately as soon as we said the question, I was like standing out in the in the snow waiting for the school bus. Yeah. <laughs> Very small amount of us maybe from rural areas. All right, Nikki says opening your Christmas presents. Love that. That's a good memory to keep hold of. Let's see what else folks have to say. Anita says a road trip. Yeah, mm. have, have you guys done the you know the 99 bottles of beer on the wall and you sing it through? <laughs> have you guys ever done it all the way through? By the way. I don't think I, my family did that. Okay, my family does that, guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we sang it all the way through, but we've Ugh. definitely taken plenty of road Ooh. trips. That's burned into my memory. All right, Raylene says just playing outside until dark. Yeah, until the streetlights came yeah. on. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's best. A little kick the can. All right, folks, if you think you know the answer, we still have an hour and 15 minutes to get those guesses in. And, of course, you can do that on our Facebook page or our Twitter. Just look for the question of the day post, and we'll read some more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Russia escalating attacks in Ukraine. The airstrikes that have world leaders set to meet later today. Taking a look at your local forecast in Weezer for today. Hazy conditions with a high of 76 tonight, lows in the upper 30s, and tomorrow hazy with a high of 77. Thank you, Marcos. Well, a major escalation in Russia's nearly eight month long war in Ukraine. It's prompted an emergency summit of world leaders today. Now, Russia forces or Russian forces, pardon me, they launched airstrikes across Ukraine yesterday during rush hour that hit heavily populated civilian areas and several infrastructural targets, including killing at least 14 people, injuring nearly 100. Astrid Martinez, she has the latest. President Biden and other G7 leaders will hold an emergency virtual meeting this morning to discuss support for Ukraine and ways to hold Russian President Vladimir Putin accountable. It comes one day after more than 80 Russian missiles rained down on more than a dozen regions of Ukraine. Ukrainian officials say more than 10 energy infrastructure targets were hit, leaving many without power, water, and heat. The entire world has once again seen the true face of the terrorist state that kills our people. Putin has claimed the strikes were in retaliation for the destruction of a vital bridge that connects Russia to Crimea over the weekend. The latest attacks set off pro-Ukraine demonstrations around the globe. From Sydney, Australia to Bucharest, Romania, outside the Ukrainian embassy to Washington, D.C., where demonstrators projected messages onto the Russian embassy while singing at the gates. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky will address the G7 leaders at the top of today's emergency meeting. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. Well, switching gears, if you have a self-driving car, researchers want to remind you the tech has its limits. 
A new study finds some drivers are putting too much trust in their self-driving cars. That's according to research by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The study found that 53% of General Motors users, 42% of Tesla users, and 12% of Nissan users were comfortable letting the system drive without watching what was happening on the road. I don't know, Sarah Marcos, do you think you could? I, I have friends that have a self-driving car, well, at least one of them, and I, no, I could not. <laughs> I do not trust it, um, and I know that they do. They, they will actually, like, watch TV, that sort of thing, but I, I have to have control. What yeah. about you, Marcos? No, talk about, yeah, yeah I, no, that, that scares me. Talk about distracted <laughs> driving. But I mean, I guess that's their purpose, right? Is their self-driving, yeah, so. It's, it's good to have that safety feature. Yeah. I just don't know if I'd give it like 100%, yeah. you know, I mean, be 100% distracted. I'll have to look at the reviews before. Yeah. But. <laughs> but fun to think about. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, also fun is, of course, our fall temperatures that are seeming to be sticking around, Marcos. Yeah, slightly uh, cooler for today, Sarah, as we have a cold front moving through the area, but uh, going to be getting into those mid to upper 70s once again later on this week. Our current temperature, though, 51 degrees, uh, east winds at 8 miles an hour. Uh, temperatures outside this morning, 55 in Twin Falls, 48 in Caldwell, 61 Ontario, and then Mountain Home at 46 degrees. Our highs for for today, uh, slightly cooler than yesterday, 74 in Boise, 73 Mountain Home, and then 75 in Caldwell. So we'll be about four to five degrees above normal, which is about 68, 69 for this time of year. Our future cast looking fairly dry, may see gusty winds in the area this afternoon as that cold front moves out of the area. But overall, dry conditions, that high pressure rebuilding by tomorrow, and we'll be seeing those upper 70s once again. Our forecast for tomorrow, sunny, uh, mid to upper 70s as the uh, week continues. Uh, hazy, condition, uh, hazy sunshine for today, windy conditions, highs in the 70s, and we're gonna be seeing dry conditions through the weekend. A quick look at that forecast, mid 70s for tomorrow, Staying in the mid 70s throughout the week, lots of sunshine, lows in the 40s, and then the mountain forecast cool down to cool down for today, 70s tomorrow, staying in the low 70s with that sunshine and lows in the 30s. Ooh, a little chilly start for our friends up in the mountains. Thank you, Marcos. 550 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you teen traffic all morning long. Yeah, looking good out there this morning. Yeah, no reports of anything set to slow you down this morning. So if you do have extra time, grab a cup of coffee or tea and join us for your latest news headlines and weather. And when you get in the car, just make sure you tune it to News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a missing Arizona man finally found in a different state where he ended up and who was able to get him back home. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 553. Welcome back. The kindness of one stranger helping reunite a man with his family. Now, an Arizona man with memory issues, he ended up in front of a post office in New Mexico. That's when a worker noticed him and got help. Now, Cameron Pallone has the story. In his reality, we were in New York, and he didn't know that he was in Animus, New Mexico. Back in September, postal worker Mary McCarty arrived early to the Animus post office, soon spotting an older gentleman and his dog seemingly wandering about the parking lot. I knew he wasn't new to the area because I'm at the post office, so I kind of know everybody that moves in and out. Concerned for his well-being, Mary says she approached to see if he needed any help. That's when the man who said his name was Glenn told her that he had driven there from New York when his Jeep ran out of gas, forcing him to walk through the desert all night. And he's like, well, I, I need to get hold of my wife and she can bring me some gas. And I said, great. What's her name? I don't remember. That's, that's okay. Mary sensed early on something wasn't right, calmly sitting him down, grabbed him some water, checked his vitals, and decided to contact the sheriff's department. 
when the officer got there, my main focus was to be able to run him through the national database to find out, is he reported as a missy, missing person? Little did she know, two hours west across the Arizona state line, a contingent of family, friends, strangers, and law enforcement were desperately searching for the man now in front of her. Knowing that there's so many directions he could have gone into the desert, um, into the mountains, into the canyons, into back roads, anywhere where somebody maybe wouldn't even find him. Christy Zumas is Glenn's daughter. She says 14 years ago he suffered a traumatic brain injury from a motorcycle accident that nearly took his life. He has very severe short term and long term memory loss. Glenn no longer drives, but somehow got the keys and drove off with his dog Maggie. After an agonizing day long search, Christy got an early morning phone call. When the call first came in, I knew it was, it was either going to be great news or terrible news, you know, because that call was coming at 7 a.m. Thanks to a woman named Mary Glenn had been found safely. When I finally got to talk to his daughter, we had this instant connection. She is um, just the brightest spirit. Not only did she do everything else, she actually also found my father's Jeep. Christy says she was blown away by the kindness of so many. Two small towns showing what it means to have a big heart and a little lady in the right place at the right time. It just turned out to really be a beautiful, a beautiful experience. And I made some really good friends. I love that story. All right, it's about still six weeks until Thanksgiving. But the holiday shopping season, it's already here. Now, Target announced it's kicking off its Black Friday deals now three weeks earlier than last year with new weekly discount offers through Thanksgiving weekend. And today and tomorrow, Amazon is holding its second Prime Day of the Year called Prime Early Access Sale. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, crews set to lift fire closures in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. What they want visitors to still be on the lookout for as they clean up Idaho's largest wildfire. Plus, a fire burning in Washington state has neighbors on edge. We give you the update. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, shoplifting in Idaho on the rise. How local police are teaming up with retailers to crack down on the nationwide problem. Plus, another leader stepping down after the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas earlier this year, who's announcing their retirement. Plus, a local business headed to Florida to clean up following Hurricane Ian, what they hope to help with as neighbors there return to what's left of their homes. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look of downtown Boise on this Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And before we get to our top stories, let's send it over to Marcos Guadarrama for a look at our weather forecast. A look at our current temperature right now, 49 degrees, a little chilly this morning. Uh, west winds there at five miles an hour. We are going to see a slight cool down this afternoon as a cold front moves in through the area. But looking at our temperatures right now, 54 uh, Nampa, 64 Ontario, 54 Mountain Home, and 39 degrees out in the McCall area as you start your Friday. A look at uh, our almanac. Temperatures are staying above average once again today, but slightly cooler. Yesterday's high, 70. 77 degrees, uh, 68 are normal. Our highs for today, 74 degrees Boise, 73 Mountain Home, 75 out in Nampa, and 76 degrees in the Caldwell area. There's a McCall at 67 for today. Looking at that smoke surface forecast, going to continue to see those hazy conditions in the valley as those fires burn in the region. So uh, going to see those uh, sunny and hazy hazy sunshine, windy conditions, highs in the 70s, and we're going to be staying dry through the weekend. 
a picture perfect week ahead. Thank you, Marcos. It is 601 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Look out there this morning. We have a live look for you. Everything is running along smoothly. Yeah, no reports of anything out there slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. We begin this morning with a 77 year old man from Meridian missing. Now this is Robert Trotter. He was last seen leaving Central Valley Baptist Church around 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. Now, he was driving a silver 2018 Jeep Renegade. By four that afternoon, cell phone data placed him somewhere between Horseshoe Bend and Banks. Trotter, he's described as a five foot eight man with gray hair. If you've seen him or have any information that could help find him, please call 911. Shoplifting, it's on the rise in Idaho, and now police are partnering with several businesses to not only stop shoplifters, but also prevent other stores from being targeted. CBS 2's Michaela Elich tells us how they're hoping to combat the growing problem. Every year, businesses across the U.S. lose billions of dollars to shoplifters. Here in Idaho, it's no different. It's truly following so much more of the national narrative that we see, not only in the West, but the whole entire country. Retailers are seeing more activity. Last year, BPD reported 472 shoplifting cases. This year, that number is expected to go even higher. Looking at year to year, approximately 50 more in 2022 so far than in 2021. So by the end of 2022, we should be well ahead of 21. The main culprits aren't locals, but traveling thieves. Boise, Idaho is also targeted by groups that travel nationally, that travel internationally as well. In March, Boise police arrested two women who were allegedly members of a band of traveling thieves. They're accused of shoplifting over $37,000 in merchandise. That's why BPD entered a partnership. It's made up of 26 law enforcement agencies and 34 retailers. We have um, regular meetings with the retailers at the Boise Police Department and other police departments where we talk about it because if the person's hitting Walmart, they're probably hitting Target. They're probably hitting Home Depot. And the partnership allows for better communication. If a retailer X has a person steal from them, they're able to share that information, get it to us as law enforcement, get it to the other retailers. And so while they were not able to, able to catch them at that time, you know, when they walk into that next door, because they are going to walk into that next door, they're able to use that information. Truly, it's, it's impacting all of us. And if we're able to work with our retailers, work with our law enforcement agencies, we're able to apprehend these folks. Right now, that partnership is not only here in Idaho, but in surrounding states of Oregon, Washington, Utah, and even California. Well, switching gears, following months of community outrage over the handling of the Uvalde school shooting, the district superintendent announcing he plans to retire by the end of the academic year. Now, recently, Hal Harriet and other officials, they faced heavy scrutiny for procedures that were in place at Robb Elementary School leading up to the shooting that left 19 students and two teachers dead. I personally am asking that you accept the retirement offered by Dr. Harold and that you make it not at the end of the school year, but as soon as possible. The Uvalde School Board voted unanimously last night to begin searching for Harold's successor. And last week, the entire police department that serves that school district was suspended. Now, a July report from Texas lawmakers, they found systemic failures and egregious poor decision making in the response to the shooting, during which responders waited more than an hour before confronting the gunman in a classroom. Our place is, is over there. It was probably moved about 20 feet, hit the other trailer next to us. We can't get in the front door, but we were able to get in through the back door, and the water was all the way up to the ceiling. Cleanup continues in Florida after Hurricane Ian hit the state two weeks ago. Many neighbors in Fort Myers Beach are returning home for the first time since evacuating to see the damage. Some were not able to get into their homes and others had to use ladders to climb over their roofs just to get inside. And a local business here in Idaho is helping homeowners in Florida recover after the devastating impact of Hurricane Ian. Disaster Response of Idaho sent a team of 14 to Florida. The group arrived this weekend and so far they've been able to help two people get back into their homes and they're hoping to help many more taking a lot of people and a lot of work but it's great to be able to actually 
hear people coming up and saying, hey, you know what, I really appreciate you guys being here. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that we can go and into our house. Right now, they're working to make damaged homes secure. They're putting up plywood where doors and windows were, clearing out people's belongings, and then cutting out drywall that was destroyed by water. They plan to stay for several months, helping in the recovery efforts, at least until Christmas and possibly longer. Well, it's turning to fire season. We do have a fire burning north of Camas. That's in Clark County, Washington, which is quickly growing. Crews working to get that blaze under control this morning. The Nakia Creek fire sitting at over 250 acres. It did grow quickly from the 70 acre fire that was first reported earlier this week. Fire officials issuing level one and two evacuation notices to about 110 homes. That's as the blaze grows closer, something neighbors say is unusual. Come October, we're used to rain right now, and you know as we start getting hunting season, and you know everyone kind of starting to transition recreationally. Uh, you know it's definitely alarming that it's still this dry. With those hot and dry conditions expected to continue another week, neighbors say they plan to stay alert. Now the Washington Department of Natural Resources says the cause of that fire is still under investigation. In the meantime, the Salmon Chalice National Forest. They'll remove their moose fire emergency area and lift all road and trail closures on Thursday, October 14th. Now, as things reopen, forest officials, they're warning visitors to remain vigilant. Now, a reminder that after a fire, the root system of burned or dead trees, they can be weak or damaged, and that does increase the potential for trees to fall without warning. You also want to keep an eye out for ash pits. Those are holes in the ground that are filled with ash that contain hot embers underneath that are covered up. Now, you can find more information and safety tips. Just head to our website, IdahoNews.com. Yeah, getting excited. Um, I know that the guy earlier mentioned hunting season. Many people heading up to our mountains to go recreate. And I know the leaves changing, a beautiful sight. Marcos, what can they expect as far as those temperatures? Slightly cooler temperatures this afternoon, Sarah. I'm going to start out uh, by taking a look at this uh, look outside. Beautiful Bogus Basin, Donnelly there. And then, of course, <clears throat> uh, downtown Boise this morning. But Slightly cooler conditions for today as a cold front moves through the area. We are going to get warm back up into the mid to upper 70s this uh, later this week, though, as uh, that cold front moves through. A look at our current temperatures, uh, 54 out in Nampa, there's 52 in Caldwell, 48 out in Mountain Home, and then 55 degrees out in the Baker City area. There's McCall at 39 degrees. A look at our coffee forecast for this morning, 70, uh, this afternoon, 73 degrees, nice and sunny, so slightly cooler than yesterday high of 77 degrees and then of course set out the door forecast as you uh, head out the door this morning. Temperatures in the 50s uh, warming into the 60s by about 1 p.m. and then 5 p.m. Uh, 73 degrees uh, will be one of the a high for this afternoon. A look at that uh, bus stop forecast, cooler conditions, 50 and clear this morning. And as the kids head home and you uh, pick them up at the bus stop, 72 degrees and sunny conditions uh, for this afternoon. Looking at that future cast, may see gusty winds in the forecast, but staying fairly dry throughout the week as that high pressure builds following the uh, cold fronts exit. So back into those mid 70s to upper 70s and dry through the weekend. Cannot complain. Thank you, Marcos. It is 610 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking out there? Well, good morning. We're doing okay with the drive on I-84 at this point. Uh, volume not that heavy. Speed's good, even through Meridian. Typical hot spots, those merge areas like 10 Mile or uh, Meridian Road and even Eagle Road. Nothing kicking in this time of the morning. And it's a uh, pretty light volume elsewhere, too, on freeway areas. Good. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Hey, what we like to see. Thank you, Ron. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the economy at the top of many voters' minds. Midterms are quickly approaching as inflation continues to create concerns. And later, a railroad union rejecting employer contracts. Why it may lead to another possible strike and some major economic setbacks. Well, hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 
20% of people will attend one of these between now and the end of the year. That answer, a baby shower, very exciting. Now for today's question, nearly 10% of people say they have a vivid memory of doing this as a child. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your local forecast in Marsing today. Hazy conditions with a high of 73 tonight. Clear skies with lows in the 40s and tomorrow hazy with a high of 75. Thank you, Marcos. Well, the third largest U.S. Railroad Union rejecting a deal with employers. Now that once again raises the possibility of a strike that could hobble the transportation of goods and affect the economy. Now before any walkout, both sides first expected to return to the bargaining table. Now, while the union did agree to keep working for now, the group that represents their railroads in negotiations said it was disappointed the union rejected its agreement. And early voting begins this week in several states for the November midterms. New polling shows economy remains a top issue for most voters. For many business owners, rising costs are creating concerns for their businesses and the families of their employees. I employ a staff of over 30 people and I worry about their families and I worry about how I'm going to provide them a paycheck to put food on their family's table. While many voters say they believe Republicans are better suited to handle the economy, a CBS News poll taken in late September found that among voters who think the economy is very important, they believe Republican candidates are talking about immigration and President Biden more than their economic policies. Well, hey, the Idaho Food Bank is giving out food in Nampa today. Now, free food will be distributed at the Ford Idaho Center parking lot that starts at 11 a.m. and is set to last through 3 p.m., but it could end sooner. Keep in mind if that food does run out. Well, a local church is donating land, helping meet the need for affordable housing in the area. Lakeview Church of the Nazarene donating almost 3,300 square feet of land at 6th Street North in Nampa. Now, Leap Housing, which is an Idaho-based nonprofit, they'll develop, construct, and operate single-family affordable housing units on that land. Some pretty cool stuff. Of course, we will keep you updated. We've been following that for quite some time. And one thing we've been following for a while, of course, is these temperatures. And Marcos, not seeing a dip just yet. No, uh, uh, slightly cooler for today though, Sarah, but we're going to be seeing that high pressure rebuild once again tomorrow, putting us in that above average category, about 10 degrees above normal for this time of year. Looking at our current temperature though, 49 degrees, uh, west winds there at 5 miles an hour. A look outside, 55 down in Mountain Home, 54 Twin Falls, 45 Sun Valley, and then 52 out in the Caldwell and Nampa area. And of course, uh, Boise at 49 degrees. Our highs for today, sl slightly cooler than yesterday. 74 Boise, 76 Caldwell, and then 73 degrees in the Mountain Home area. Looking at that future cast, Staying fairly dry for right now. Uh, may see gusty winds today as that cold front moves across our area, but staying dry, uh, high pressure rebuilding, so uh, bringing us those warmer than normal temperatures throughout the week. Our forecast for tomorrow, staying in the mid 70s, but we are going to be getting into the upper 70s later on during the week. So expect hazy sunshine for today, windy conditions, highs in the 70s, and then staying dry through the weekend. A look at that forecast. Cool down today, but those mid 70s across the board throughout the week. Sunshine lows in the 40s. Mountain forecast uh, cool down into the 60s. 70 tomorrow and then 73 Thursday, 73 Friday. Low 70s throughout the week with lows in the 30s. Uh, and then that sunshine sticking around throughout the weeks, folks. Thank you, Marco. 618 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. All right, uh, we're looking good so far, doing okay. Don't have the buildups fully kicking in yet. Uh, volume, a well, little on the increase, but hasn't been that bad yet. Coming east, primary flow of morning traffic out of Canyon County, of course. Uh, things quiet, close in, Boise area, whether it's 184 or other. Routes uh, rolling into downtown, perhaps, uh, State, Chinden, and further out, Ken County. Things quiet, too, on most major routes. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, 
Just make sure you turn the dial to News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And before we go, let's get a check of Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello everybody, it's Corporal Wills coming at you with another Traffic Tip Tuesday on this beautiful sunny fall day. Now speaking of the sun, it's nice and bright and beautiful out here right now today, but we're finding that the sun's coming up a little bit later in the morning and going down a little bit earlier in the evening. So we're really needing to use headlights and taillights and make sure they're working properly before we hit the road between sunset and sunrise. So what does the Idaho law say specifically about headlights and taillights? Well, in the state of Idaho, you are required to have your headlights and taillights on and functioning between sunset and sunrise or any other time that it's too dark out to see your vehicle from more than 500 feet. So if we think about those really overcast and rainy days and our vehicles aren't quite seen on the road as easily, we probably need our headlights and taillights on those days as well. But speaking specifically from sunset to sunrise, since the sun is going down a little earlier and coming up a little bit later, we want to talk a little bit more about what do headlights and taillights mean that we have to make sure they're working. So in the state of Idaho, you have to have two functioning headlights, one on the right and one on the left. They can't both be on one side and one functioning tail light in order to be within the Idaho law. Now, two tail lights is even going to be more safe because that means that you're more easily seen. The only exception to two headlights and one tail light would be on a motorcycle, which is what I ride, and many folks do. You're only required to have the one headlight and one tail light operating on a motorcycle. So just remember, we want you to be seen so that people don't run into you and that you can see the road and drive to where you're going safely is all of our goal. So that's this week's Traffic Tip Tuesday. Remember, buckle up, buckaroo. Buckle up, buckaroos. Still to come on CBS 2 News, new findings when it comes to cancer screening and colonoscopies. And later, many who own self-driving cars are putting too much trust in the technology. Why one new study reminding drivers about the tech's limitations. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News This Morning. It's 624. Welcome back. There are new questions today about the effectiveness of a common test detecting cancer. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus shares what a new study shows about colonoscopies. Hey everybody, this study, one of the first to head to head compare those who got a screening colonoscopy and those who did not. Researchers found those who did get the test only had an 18% lower risk of getting colorectal cancer and no significant reduction in death compared to those who did not. It was an unexpected find of a test routinely recommended to find colon cancer at an early stage. Depending on what you find during a colonoscopy, it can be anywhere from uh, yearly, every three years, five years, up to every 10 years if you have a completely clean colonoscopy. Jeff James told us, however, his first screening colonoscopy likely saved his life. Doctors did discover he had early stage colon cancer. Surgery to remove it now has him cancer free and appreciating, he says, the gift of good health. I guess a, a brush whether close or not so close with your mortality, we'll, we'll do that. But Dr. David Draper and the team here at Ohio's TriHealth Cancer Institute told me this is a study where it's important to go beyond the headline. Turns out less than half of the people invited to get a colonoscopy chose to do so. When you look at those who did get the screening test, in that population a colonoscopy was shown to cut the risk of cancer by more than 30 percent and the risk of dying of that cancer by half. Cancer team also says the results of this study are not consistent with previous investigations of other colon cancer screenings and longer follow-up is needed. They also remind us that colon cancer is now showing up in people who are younger more than in previous years. We don't completely know why. There are some theories that it may have to do with uh, current diet, exercise, uh, maybe the, the gut biome, the different microbacteria that we have in our GI tract. Current guidelines recommend colon cancer screening with colonoscopy should begin by age 45. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Now a new study did find some eligible patients were less likely to be screened for lung cancer. Now that's including men, former smokers and younger people who met that criteria. 
Data collected between 2015 and 2019 showed screened persons tended to be older, female, and more likely to currently smoke. Now, an accompanying letter recommends doctors take complete smoking histories from their patients and says messaging needs to reach people eligible for those screenings from historically underserved populations. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a local group bringing aid to those impacted by Hurricane Ian. How they're helping out this morning. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. Of course, after the three hour block of FBI, you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, shoplifting in Idaho, it's on the rise. How local police are teaming up with retailers to crack down on the nationwide problem. Plus, another leader stepping down after the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, who's announcing their retirement. Plus, crews set to lift fire closures in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. What they want visitors to still be on the lookout for as they clean up Idaho's largest wildfire. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Starting out by taking a look at your current for uh, current temperature this morning, 45, 49 degrees, west winds at 5 miles an hour as you start your Tuesday morning. A look at our other temperatures across the region, 45 in Nampa, 64 Ontario, 55 Mountain Home, and 39 for our friends out in the McCall area. Going to continue to stay above normal for today temperature-wise. This is our normal 68, our high yesterday, 77 degrees. We're going to stay about... Five, six degrees above normal for today as the cold front moves through the area. That puts us at 74 in Boise, 73 Mountain Home, and then 75 degrees in the Nampa area. We are also going to see uh, hazy conditions in the valley as those fires continue to burn in the region. Uh, so we'll continue to see that into tomorrow. Uh, hazy sunshine is what to expect. Windy conditions, highs in the 70s today and the rest of the week, but a dry condition through the weekend. Not too bad. Thank you, Marcos. It is 631 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Seeing a few more headlights out there this morning, but still no reports of anything out there slowing you down incidents nor accidents. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. A 77 year old man from Meridian is missing. Robert Trotter was last seen leaving Central Valley Baptist Church around 11 a.m. Sunday morning. He's driving a silver 2018 Jeep Renegade and by four on Sunday afternoon, cell phone data placed him somewhere between Horseshoe Bend and Banks. Trotter is described as five foot eight with gray hair. If you've seen him or have any information that could help find him, please call 911. And shoplifting is on the rise in Idaho. That's according to Idaho State Police data. Every year, businesses across the U.S. lose billions of dollars to shoplifters. And here in Idaho, it's no different. The main culprits are not locals, but traveling thieves. Now, police are partnering with several businesses to not only stop shoplifters, but also prevent other stores from being targeted. If a retailer X has a person steal from them, they're able to share that information, get it to us as law enforcement, get it to the other retailers. And so while they were not able to, able to catch them at that time, you know, when they walk into that next door, because they are going to walk into that next door, they're able to use that information. Right now, the partnership is not only in Idaho, but also the surrounding states of Oregon, Washington, Utah, and even California. Well, following months of community outrage over the handling of the Uvalde school shooting, the district superintendent announcing he plans to retire by the end of the academic year. Now, recently, Hal Harrell and other officials, they faced heavy scrutiny for procedures in place at Robb Elementary School that led up to the shooting that left 19 students and two teachers dead. I personally am asking that you accept the retirement offered by Dr. Harold and that you make it not at the end of the school year, 
but as soon as possible. The Uvalde School Board voted unanimously last night to begin the search for Harold's successor. And last week, the entire police department that serves that school district was suspended. Now, a July report from Texas lawmakers, they found systemic failures and egregious poor decision making in the response to the school shooting, during which responders waited more than an hour before confronting the gunman in a classroom. Our place is, is over there. It was probably moved about 20 feet, hit the other trailer next to us. We can't get in the front door, but we were able to get in through the back door and the water was all the way up to the ceiling. Cleanup continues in Florida after Hurricane Ian hit the state two weeks ago. Many neighbors in Fort Myers Beach are returning home for the first time since evacuating to see the damage. Some were not able to get into their homes and others had to use ladders to climb over their roofs just to get inside. Well, a local business is helping homeowners in Florida recover following the impact of Hurricane Ian. Now that group arrived this weekend and so far they tell us they've helped two people get back into their home. They're hoping to help many more during their time. And CBS 2's Angela Kerndall shares how they're lending a hand. When you look at the news, you can feel heartbreak for those people and everything. But being here and actually being involved with the cleanup, it is beyond anything I've ever fathomed. Helping people recover from disasters is what McCall native Milton Espy does for a living, but he's never seen anything like the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. It is absolutely mind boggling and it just breaks your heart, but you're here glad to be helpful. The company he works for, Disaster Response of Idaho, sent a team of 14 to Florida. They're now working in Bonita Springs. This whole area in here, I mean, was just littered with with debris everywhere. So this is, you know, we've cleaned it up and we've put it in piles around here, but we're waiting on our dumpsters. It's been really hard to get dumpsters. And so we have dumpsters coming tomorrow and then we'll then we'll be able to to get it cleaned cleaned up and looking a lot better. They've added dozens of locals to their crew. Right now, they're working to make damaged homes secure. They're putting up plywood where doors and windows once were, clearing out people's belongings, and then cutting out drywall destroyed by water. The lower level of all these homes has basically just been destroyed from, from the surge coming through. Here you can see a flood line about six and a half feet high. I'm 5'10", so... That's a good six inches taller than me. The Idaho crew isn't licensed to do major repair work in Florida, so they're getting the homes ready for the next contractors to come in. Everything down to bare bones to where we can actually start getting some uh, machinery and, and equipment in there to, to suck out the moisture, clean the air, to where we can start getting rebuilt to where they can get these people back into their homes. They did get a couple back into their home. They're going from one house to the next, doing what they can for as many people as they can. This is not a short project. They're not just going to be in Florida for a few weeks. They plan to stay for several months. It's like taking a lot of people and a lot of work, but it's great to be able to actually hear people coming up and saying, hey, you know what, I really appreciate you guys being here and uh, you know, I'm glad that we can go and into our house. The company's CEO, Bo Value, says they're just grateful they can help. And my team, I mean, they're working their butt off. I'm proud of them for what, what the work they're doing. Now, Bo Value says he expects his team could be in Florida helping with those recovery efforts through at least Christmas and possibly even longer. Well, Turning to fire season, the Salmon National Chalice National Forest, they'll be removing the Moose Fire Emergency Area and lifting all road and trail closures. That's on Thursday, October 14th. Now, as things are reopening, forest officials want to remind visitors to remain vigilant. And after a fire, that the root system of burned or dead trees, they can be weak or damaged, and that does increase the potential for trees to fall without warning. You also want to keep an eye out for ash pits. Now, those are holes in the ground filled with ash, often containing hot embers underneath. You can find out more information as well as tips. Just head to our website, IdahoNews.com. Yeah, and it is a chilly start for our friends up there in our mountains this morning, Marcos. But at least here, you definitely want to grab your jacket before heading on out.
Yeah, chilly conditions this morning, Sarah. I believe our uh, high a couple minutes ago was in the upper 40s, but we're also going to see cooler temperatures today as a cold front moves through the area. Here's a look outside Bogus Basin, Donnelly, uh, downtown Boise. They're beautiful live shots uh, as you start your Tuesday morning. Current temperatures, low 50s in the Nampa Caldwell area, uh, Boise at uh, 49 degrees, 52 out in Mountain Home, and then Ontario at 64 this morning, McCall at 39 degrees. Our forecast for today, a high of 73 degrees, sunny conditions, a little cooler than yesterday, uh, yesterday's high of 77. So that's all, of course, courtesy of that uh, cold front moving through that out the door forecast as you start your morning 50s this morning, uh, 60s by 1 p.m. and then 70s by about 3 p.m. this afternoon, uh, getting into the about 73, 74 degrees uh, for your Tuesday. That bus stop forecast as you take the kids out to the bus stop 50 and clear this morning and then as you uh, pick them up this afternoon. 72 degrees, nice and sunny conditions. That future cast, are, we are going to continue to stay dry for the time being as that cold front moves uh, out of the area. We're going to see that high pressure build once again, putting us back into those mid 70s to upper 70s as the week uh, as we go about the week and uh, gusty winds for today, but looking like a nice fall week of temperatures ahead, Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. It is 640 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KVOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. All right, thanks, Sarah. Good morning, folks. So getting ready to get out the door. Uh, you know that uh, traffic can be a little busy this time of the morning, but typically after 7 is when things begin to really kick in. A little bit of a rush trying to show up as we typically get near, uh, say, 10 Mile Meridian Road. Those spots, as always, you got to watch out a little bit. Don't have anything big to get in the way this morning as you get ready to leave. It's uh, very quiet pretty much all the way around. Major routes away from the freeways don't have uh, buildups much of any quite net, uh, at this point. Highway 2026 included near Highway 16. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn it to News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, hey, it's time for our question of the day. That question is nearly 10% of people say they have a vivid memory of doing this as a child. What is it? Marcos, Ashley, what are we thinking? I'm going to stick with mine, uh, learning how to ride a bike. I like that. Yeah. Say ingrained. Again, I want folks at home to remember nearly 10%. Ashley, what are you thinking? I know I'm trying to think of something that's only 10%. Maybe going on their first school field trip. Ooh, I like mm. that. Yeah, especially with the whole pumpkin patches. And I was going to say, I think my first field trip was a pumpkin patch, but I'll have to ask my mom. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been seeing lots of pictures of families <laughs> out there at the pumpkin patch. Of course, we love to see it this time of year. Let's see what folks have to say. Carissa says losing their first mm. tooth. Oh, that takes me back. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember that. That's All right. a strong memory. That, yes, a very strong yeah. memory. Let's see what else. Hopefully the tooth fairy came through for you. Karen says visiting Santa for pictures. Oh, always a fun time. Mm. Oh, it's a great time. I love our Santa, of course. Melody says saying their first words. Whew. Yeah, I mean, if it's 10%, I'm not sure. I do not remember what my first word even was. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's yeah, one. Neither do I. That's a question for mom. All right. <laughs> well, if you think you know the answer, you still have 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can do that on our Facebook page or, of course, our Twitter. Just answer on that question of the day post. And, of course, we will re reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, Russia escalating attacks in Ukraine. The airstrikes that have world leaders set to meet later today. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 645. Welcome back. A major escalation in Russia's nearly eight-month-long war on Ukraine. It's now prompting an emergency summit of major world leaders later today. Now, Russian forces, they launched airstrikes across Ukraine yesterday during rush hour, which hit heavily populated civilian areas and several infrastructure targets. They killed at least 14 people and injured nearly 100. Astrid Martinez has the latest. 
President Biden and other G7 leaders will hold an emergency virtual meeting this morning to discuss support for Ukraine and ways to hold Russian President Vladimir Putin accountable. It comes one day after more than 80 Russian missiles rained down on more than a dozen regions of Ukraine. Ukrainian officials say more than 10 energy infrastructure targets were hit, leaving many without power, water and heat. The entire world has once again seen the true face of the terrorist state that kills our people. Putin has claimed the strikes were in retaliation for the destruction of a vital bridge that connects Russia to Crimea over the weekend. Russia is a terrorist state. The latest attacks set off pro-Ukraine demonstrations around the globe. From Sydney, Australia to Bucharest, Romania, outside the Ukrainian embassy to Washington, D.C., where demonstrators projected messages onto the Russian embassy while singing at the gates. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky will address the G7 leaders at the top of today's emergency meeting. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. Well, a heads up, if you have a self-driving car, researchers want to remind you the tech does have its limits. A new study finds some drivers are putting too much trust into their self-driving cars. That's according to research by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The study found that 53% of General Motors users, 42% of Tesla users, and 12% of Nissan users were comfortable letting the system drive without watching what was happening on the road. You know, I think having a self-driving car would be nice, but I think I'd be too nervous, you know, ready to grab the wheel at any point. Yeah, no, you gotta at least be close. I know, I wanna see some video of people driving well just not paying attention you know like posted up in the back seat watching a movie that sort of thing haven't there been videos of people like recline back like sleeping while their car is just driving i know uh, i can't i can't do it more, more power to them for that comfort but yeah not my personality i have been in a self-driving uber once Ooh, and I, oh. I did think that was pretty cool but uh I, I, did, I did you feel safe i did yeah yeah that's good but, Okay, well, that's, I mean, it's all about safety. Of, <laughs> of the self-driving cars while not having to be the driver behind the wheel. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, well, if you're heading out this morning, hopefully you got two hands on the wheel today. Keep that in mind. It's going to be a beautiful start to your Tuesday. A good start uh, indeed, Sarah. 49 degrees, our current temperature, a little cooler than the normal 50, mid 50s we see around this time. A look at our uh, current temperatures across the region, uh, 64 Ontario, 55 down in Mountain Home and 37 in the Sun Valley area. There's 39 in McCall as well. Our highs for today, a little cooler than yesterday's highs of 77, 74 Boise, 73 Mountain Home, Caldwell at 76 and 75 in the Nampa area. That future cast uh, looking fairly clear. Uh, may see gusty winds this afternoon as that front uh, leaves the area, but we're going to be staying dry. That high pressure returning tomorrow, warming us up into those mid to upper 70s for the rest of your week. And we're going to be staying dry and sunny through the weekend, folks. Forecast for tomorrow. Mid 70s, uh, staying nice and sunny. As I said, that high pressure build. So, a look at what to expect. Hazy sunshine, those hazy uh, conditions continuing in the area. Windy conditions, highs in the 70s, and then dry through the weekend, making it a nice, picture perfect weekend. So, Hazy, that cool down for today, mid, uh, warming into those mid 70s throughout the rest of the week, 76 Thursday, 76 Friday, nice and sunny with lows in the 40s. That mountain forecast, uh, 74 tomorrow, staying in the low 70s throughout the week, sunny conditions, and then those lows in the 30s, folks. Thank you, Marcos. 650 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Well, it's definitely been a little bit busier over about the last uh, 15 minutes or so. That uh, pre-7 o'clock buildup, we tend to get a little bit on I-84. Nothing major going, but a little bit of crowding to look out for. Various interchanges like 10 Mile Meridian Road or even a little bit now and then near Eagle Road. And you even tap the brakes at times just before the 184 split. But all in all, the uh, commute, nothing major going this morning. Even away from the freeways, pretty quiet. No accident spots to get in the way. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all 
our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a missing Arizona man finally found in a different state where he ended up and who was able to get him back home. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 653. Welcome back. The kindness of one stranger helps reunite a man and his family. Now, an Arizona man with memory issues, he ended him up in front of a post office in New Mexico. That's when a worker noticed him and got help. Now, Cameron Pallone has the story. In his reality, we were in New York and he didn't know that he was in Animus, New Mexico. Back in September, postal worker Mary McCarty arrived early to the Animus post office, soon spotting an older gentleman and his dog seemingly wandering about the parking lot. I knew he wasn't new to the area because I'm at the post office, so I kind of know everybody that moves in and out. Concerned for his well-being, Mary says she approached to see if he needed any help. That's when the man who said his name was Glenn told her that he had driven there from New York when his Jeep ran out of gas, forcing him to walk through the desert all night. And he's like, well, I, I need to get hold of my wife and she can bring me some gas. And I said, great. What's her name? I don't remember. That's okay. Mary sensed early on something wasn't right, calmly sitting him down, grabbed him some water, checked his vitals, and decided to contact the sheriff's department. When the officer got there, my main focus was to be able to run him through the national database to find out, is he reported as a missy, missing person? Little did she know, two hours west, across the Arizona state line, a contingent of family, friends, strangers, and law enforcement were desperately searching for the man now in front of her. Knowing that there's so many directions he could have gone into the desert, um, into the mountains, into the canyons, into back roads, anywhere where somebody maybe wouldn't even find him. Christy Zumas is Glenn's daughter. She says 14 years ago he suffered a traumatic brain injury from a motorcycle accident that nearly took his life. He has very severe short term and long term memory loss. Glenn no longer drives, but somehow got the keys and drove off with his dog Maggie. After an agonizing day long search, Christy got an early morning phone call. When the call first came in, I knew it was, it was either going to be great news or terrible news, you know, because that call was coming at 7 a.m. Thanks to a woman named Mary Glenn had been found safely. When I finally got to talk to his daughter, we had this instant connection. She is um, just the brightest spirit. Not only did she do everything else, she actually also found my father's Jeep. Christy says she was blown away by the kindness of so many. Two small towns showing what it means to have a big heart and a little lady in the right place at the right time. It just turned out to really be a beautiful, a beautiful experience. And I made some really good friends. Oh, I love that the world needs more Marys. All right, it's time for our question of the day. Nearly 10% of people say they have a vivid memory of doing this as a child. What is it? The answer is taking their first steps. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you right back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next, and watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.